Now we want to make sure that it's really easy for you to use your TI-83 to find the areas under the normal curve. Now in order to find the area under the normal curve there's three things you have to know. One, you have to know the distribution is normal. The other is you need to know what the population mean is equal to and you need to know what the population standard deviation is equal to. When you know those three things, you can find the probability of your random variable x being in any interval. And this can be described in two ways. You can think of it as the probability of one randomly selected being in this interval, and by interval I mean between 127 and 130. You can also think of this as saying the proportion of the population that's in this interval. Okay, so let's do this first one here. Now notice this, 127, that's the lower bound in your interval. So imagine a number line, this is on the left side, and off to the right somewhere is this upper bound of 130. So you need to be clear what your lower bound and upper bound are before you use your TI-83. I'm going to turn on my calculator here and what we want is under this distribution D-I-S-T-R. It's yellow, so that means first we press the yellow second key and then we click on the VARS key and what we want is choice number two, normal CDF. We do not want to use normal PDF. That's for making graphs and we're not doing that. So we want choice number two here. So I'll press two to select it. Now we got normal CDF. Now it needs four inputs. The first thing it needs to know is the lower bound. Well for us that's 127. Then you press a comma. Now it needs to know the upper bound which is 130. So enter that. A comma. Then it needs to know the value of the mean, which is 128 in this case, a comma. Then it needs to know the value of the population standard deviation. In this case, that's one. Right parenthesis, I hit enter, and there's my answer. So right here, I'll go ahead and type in my answer. I'll say that this is equal to um, 0.8186. Of course, I can write that as a percentage, 81.86%. So there's a probability of 81.86% that one randomly selected from this population is in that interval. Or 81.86% of this population is in that interval. Now, let's try another one here. Now, this time our interval is where x is greater than 129.8. It's greater than that. So 129.8 is the lower bound. What's the upper bound? Positive infinity. So we're going to put in something big for the upper bound. So this is how we're going to do this. Once again, we're going to use normal CDF. So I press the yellow second key, then the VARS key, and then 2 to select normal CDF. Our lower bound is the 129.8, a comma. Now what are we going to do for the upper bound? Well actually, you can really put whatever you want for the upper bound as long as it's really large. It's way more than three standard deviations above this mean. Now I'm going to do overkill. I'm going to do 1 times 10 raised to the 99th power. So that's 1 followed by 99 zeros. Now that's huge! How do I do that? Well, I press the 1 key, I press the yellow second key, and then the comma key. And that puts an E up there, and then I put a 9 9. So that's how your T83 does 1 times 10 raised to the 99th power. That's a huge positive number, then a comma. Then I put in the mean of 128, then a comma, and then the standard deviation, which is 1 in this case. Right parenthesis, hit enter. And there we have our answer, so I'll go ahead and type that in. 
3.0359, I'll write it as a percentage, 3.59%. So there's a 3.59% probability that one randomly selected from this population will be greater than 129.8. Or 3.59% of this population will be greater than 129.8. All right, let's do one more here. This time our interval is such that x is less than 126.9. So 126.9 is the upper bound. What are we going to do for the lower bound? Well, once again, you can pretty much have whatever you want as long as it's way more than three of these three standard deviations below this. So zero would certainly work. But of course, I'm going to do overkill again. So first, I press the yellow second key and then VARS. Choice number two for normal CDF. I'm going to put in my negative infinity, or trying to make it negative infinity. How do I do that? I'll press a negative key here, then the one, yellow second key, then the comma key puts in that E. 99. So that's a negative 1 followed by 99 zeros. So that's a very negative number that goes way off to the left side of the number line. Once again, 0 would have worked in this case. Then a comma. Then our upper bound of 126.9, comma. Our mean of 128, comma. And then our standard deviation, which is 1 right parenthesis, enter. And we've got our answer. So I'll go ahead and type that in. Here. This is equal to 0.1357, rounding off. Of course, I'm going to put it in as a percentage of 13.57%. So there's a 13.57% probability that one randomly selected from this population will be less than 126.9. Or 13.57% of this population is going to be less than 126.9. So you just keep practicing on your calculator till you get really good at it.